morning. Good morning. Um, happy Monday to all of you. Well, of course, like um, you would have heard from the Prime Minister's presentation in the budget, yes, um, public assistance, um, our, one of the most important safety net for our social protection responsibility, um, have received um, this year pretty close to about $26 million. Um, it's very important to understand that we are we are targeting. We, we we take a lot of interest in targeting and assessing persons who are on public assistance, um, and to ensure that we have more effective coverage. The some people believe that anybody can be on public assistance. No, there are a lot of persons who may qualify as vulnerable, but would not be on public assistance because of the. The, the, the nature of their vulnerability and other persons who are competing or who are worse off than them. So we continue to target, assess persons um, to be on, on public assistance. We do have persons who are currently on public assistance who are not deemed qualified, but they are placed there in time past. We are going to cabinet today to approve a graduation strategy to get persons off public assistance who ought not to be. Um, and allow persons who are on the waiting list who qualify to get on. The, this, this household support, we are providing um, support to households. Um, it ranged from about um, you know, $200 approximately to $400, depending on the size of the households and the issues surrounding um, the households and their vulnerability. So I'm really happy, and St. Lucian should be extremely happy that the government at this time can in can increase the amount for public assistance um, so that we can better take care of our vulnerable population. Um, there are times persons would ask the question in terms of the um, mendicancy, dependency syndrome. I am not afraid about when we support persons that they become dependent on it. Um, my experience with households, a lot of persons are looking for ways out for them to do better for themselves. So the perception of um, persons wanting to remain, that is not my experience. Persons are looking as to how they can do better. Some people are, and the numbers are encouraging. So uh, some years ago, I recall when we did a, um, a survey, I recall some households, I think it was about 42 households being surveyed. Nine out of 42 households said that they did not need, they were deemed indigent, but they said they didn't want money. I asked them what would you really want? They said they want a passport. So some people thinking that if they can migrate, they can take care of the problem. So people are very complex in how they see the problems and how they see solutions to the problems. St. Lucians who are indigent, who are very poor, are not all waiting for handouts. They are very complicated, or they are very complex in coming up with solutions to their problems. We just have to speak with them and assist them in getting ways out. Our graduation strategy includes using some of the windows of support, like the microenterprise, the MSME, the Bell Fund, you know, using the TVET where we can provide persons with training. People are asking to be trained, you know, so that they can seek employment. Um, in some households, they believe if um, the, the older ones who is now at A level can find a job that too would qualify them to get out. They would be able to take care of some of the bills if one person in the house can work. So they are discussing things in a very positive way that's encouraging for St. Lucians. So I do not want for St. Lucians to believe that the 3,600 persons who are on public assistance, and again, it's a very small number when you take into consideration that 25 point 6% of our population were deemed, you know, poor based on the last poverty survey. And of course, another 24% of the population is vulnerable based on shocks. And of course, indeed, and in fact, we had this major shock of COVID that has dislocated so many livelihoods. So one would imagine that if you're looking at a current, a current poverty assessment, we would be looking at more than 25% of our population being poor under the poverty line. So if we have 3,600 persons on the public assistance, 
receiving public assistance. I think the numbers are not, you know, we shouldn't feel that it's, you know, um, out of this world, it's scary. But of course, I'm happy that the government, our prime minister can find the space um, to provide this ex extra money space, so to speak, to allow for more persons to be on it. As we internally at the ministry look to graduate persons out of public assistance and to bring on board persons who are extremely in need of public assistance. Yes, Mr. Minister, um, we, we know that you've been very influential with the Boys Training Center. Prior to your, to your, um, your transition, your health condition, you've been spending time with them, you've mm -hmm. put input. What would you say has been the, in the development in, in terms of you know, the social welfare, the well-being, you know, you play with you, you looking for a jazz program and you need to stay man and football, the army does a lot to them as a coach. Yeah. What, what are the prospects that you see for them getting into more stability, you know, more productive? You know? Yeah, but thank you for asking. We, we, have, we have plans for the boys' training center or for the whole juvenile environment, rehabilitation of our young people who find themselves in conflict of the law. The new Child Justice Act allow for persons who are in conflict with the law to be at the Boys Training Center. We do not have the space currently to accommodate them. So probation or the, the people at the prison would tell us, hey, they have some young men that ought to be with us at this point in time. We do not have the space to accommodate them. We are working towards addressing this problem. And we need to decide um, as to to what extent that we have a proper detention center as part of our juvenile rehabilitation center. To what extent that we bring together both um, what is happening at Upton Girls because we have a, a, a unit, the Upton Girls is, govern, is governed separately to the, um, the transit home at, at, at um, Kazaba and you have boys training centers. So you have three different units catering for juvenile, both boys and girls. We are looking to harmonize, rationalize, bring all of that together and to provide the best training for our wards and our young ladies. So if we, if we, um, we have sewing, you know, this is not gender specific. So both boys and girls would want to become uh, um, the tailors or seamstress or what have you. So we're providing training, providing all of this. We also, auto mechanics, auto mechanics is just, it shouldn't be male dominated, so it's not available for just the boys, but of course the young ladies were interested. So the cabinet of ministers provided us with the George Charles Secondary School as a place, uh, provides us with an opportunity to provide a lot more for our young people who are in conflict of, in conflict of the law. In terms of music, um, all of the various TVET training will be able to do that. We also will be able to separate those who are in conflict with the law and those who are there for care and protection. Um, at the moment, we are not effective in doing this. So the, the separation is not just in terms of the physical space, but in terms of who are serving. We want persons who are serving those who are there for care and protection and not those who are serving those who are in conflict with the law so that the attention, the focus, the rehabilitation effort is actually successful. So you've seen that our social officers some requirement, Yes, there would be. So we have the support of USAID on the YRE, on the OASIS, um, a program that was launched in the region um, through OECS to provide us with support to develop those programs, to do the capacity building, training of the persons who would be working there. We're looking at um, making changes within the management structure of the current organization. We, um, we have somebody in-house who are currently leading and putting the various elements of that together. We're looking at the legislation, the program, the rebranding, you know, um, so the name Boys Training Center would be disappear, it may just be a caring center. Um, but to remove the stigma associated with what has been, what it has been referred to in the past. And of course that would happen by having various professionals coming together, approved by cabinet, that would guide and provide oversight for the complete process while we interface with the Caribbean Development Bank who will be providing funding for this initiative. So I am excited about what the government is doing for this, this whole issue of juvenile um, issues, both boys and girls, and not just the boys. So I expect there to be one institution, maybe 
hopefully um, um, a statutory organization as against having three government entities doing similar things, having almost six managers, at, and you may have five or ten girls at the at the, at the Upton girls, but you have a manager for ten girls, uh, two counselors, then you have an assistant manager, you have five at the transit home, you have two managers, then you have a four, um, maybe 10, 15 boys at boys training center, you have another two managers. We need to rationalize that this is a lot of money and you're not getting enough out of that kind of investment. So we're going to rationalize that and ensure that we get a lot more for what the, gov for this, what the government, what the people of St. Lucia is investing in caring for our juvenile and have better accountability. Have it um, also for a statutory organization that you can move quickly with issues and address both human resource as well as other, other issues associated with the operations of the centers. Sorry to bring it back to the um, public assistance program, but I, I know some time ago uh, there was made some mention about some operations manual to improve the efficiency and these sort of things. Yes. I know sometimes there are you know, payments and the timing and then the different ways of facilitating those payments. Mm -hmm. um, so I know we've just received this, you know, the largest allocation that we have, but what are the works ahead in terms of improving, getting the, that money to the individuals maybe when they Absolutely, you're correct. Very, very important that the operations manual, in fact, to the cabinet, um, hopefully, um, I hope that it gets approved, but we're dealing with the whole issue of our social protection policy. Um, that document is completed, and of course, it's supported by the World Bank, and what, what happens once cabinet approves this, the the bank will give to the government of St. Lucia five million US dollars, 500,000 500, US dollars. Um, the second component is the operations manual for public assistance and for social protection. That doesn't require um, cabinet's approval. It's at the level of the ministry, but once it's, a, once it's done and it's endorsed by the World Bank, again, we will get another half a million US dollars into the treasury. So we are, um, Today, we have, we have in cabinet the social protection um, policy in its complete form um, so that cabinet will give its endorsement and hopefully um, end of financial year at the bank. June, we will get going into our treasury. So we are working with the bank and there is that co-responsibility as we do our part. The bank is saying, well done, here's some money for doing this. So our, our operations manual um, certainly um, as we revisit how we, we do public assistance, I think is critical. Um, we really want to, in, all, in everything we do, we think of how to uplift our people, um, in how you provide them with the resources, the little, what you call, kakada. And hopefully you would want them to be able to use an e-card or as, as against, you know, queuing up at the, at the town hall and giving cash and whatever you, we're now in 2023. But some of our, pe some of our people, you know, they want to remain, you know, you know, some of our senior people love the cash, you know, they, they have no confidence in that plastic thing you give them and tell them, ah, la, you know, so quella, you know, and they, they have in doubt. So when they have the money in their hands, it's, ila, must have money, money, you know, so you, you're dealing with our people and our, our Russian, you know, ways of, you know, how quickly we move into this whole digital world. For some of us, we are still aliens in it, even myself having some little challenges with the phones at time, and I have to seek guidance from my children. So I understand why we need to be patient with our senior people that we serve, and hopefully we will get on, you know, in the long run in terms of getting doing things differently. But my, my own vision for this, I would like to see the time when persons who are receiving public assistance, this is done through some e-card, through the bank, and they are all in the bank financial system, and they swipe their card and it's there, as against having um, the difficulties of, of, of doing cash, actual cash transfer in a time like now. Just one thing, I think it's uh, coming up on almost 12 months or a year, mm -hmm. ever since your ministry struck an arrangement with Flo. Yeah. The ICT um, service, uh, up to 5,000 holes are eligible at the time. Yeah. How is that uh, program going and benefiting those Yes, it's, it, is, it is going on. Um, not moving as fast as we would like it to. Um, but um, as I speak, I know that I do not have the actual numbers, but persons are making use of this, of the, um, the 20, 
the twenty dollars monthly flow bundle, and um, what flow has also done with this is that they going through the homes, they recognize that even when the government has made devices available to some households, that not every child, there are a number of children without. So floor has again increased the number of available devices, um, you know, about a thousand to complement what government is doing, which we welcome in terms of providing um, these devices in homes where they are, they are putting in the, um, the, the, the flow bundle. So that is going on very well. You know. okay, one more question. Yes, well, the usual um, pre-hurricane works. I'm expecting that to roll out by the Ministry of Infrastructure. Um, it's, it's an area that I'm also concerned about. You know, I have deep interest in from a technical standpoint. Um, that every year we have to spend large sums of money removing silt, and when the heavy rains, you know, comes, most times you still do not cannot even appreciate the investment made. You still get the flooding, and I know the people in 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 that in this part, especially in the Crownlands Bexo area, would like to see something that's that's done. You know, that can really alleviate or reduce the impact of flooding on, on these communities. So I am I am thankful that we have the resources to do some mitigating works, but I am looking down the road um, in terms of new bridges being built in that part of Crownlands to allow to lift this bridge higher that you do not have this inconvenience every time you have heavy rainfall. So that is a matter that is currently being discussed. And um, I'm hoping one of, one of these days that we can realize this. The issue of the population being sensitive, I noticed they have, some people have, notwithstanding the experiences of flooding over the years, um, even with small shelters, they have chosen to remain in certain locations and just build back, you know, repair or, or clean and move on. So they are, they, they are making that kind of decision. Whereas we respect that, we, we also have been very vigilant on new persons who are building currently and speak with planning to avoid persons to just establish on the river banks and it becomes a cost to government every time there's heavy rainfall to, to address these issues. Yeah. Well, first of all, um, we, we've started the process of looking at wages, looking at people's income. Um, you, you may know that last year we formed a review of the minimum wage. We've changed that slightly in that we want to have a minimum livable wage. The legislation speaks to a minimum wage, but you think that it must, we speak about a minimum livable wage. I understand that the Commission has its report. Um, they are reviewing it and the report will be coming to Cabinet very shortly and hopefully cabinet will make a, a decision on that. Um, we are involving all stakeholders, everyone. It, it's not a matter of the government or the other unions. Everybody's involved in that discussion. But you see, when there's an increase in wages, everybody benefits. The people who get these wages, because most likely the, the wages, when wages are increased for people at the lower incomes, they, they spend more. They spend more, and the quality of life will improve. So we, we're very excited about it, and we hope that we can get an, a joint agreement. Everyone can agree so we can have a wage that will not be a disincentive to investment, but will improve the quality of life of the people of St. Lucia and lead to wealth creation. You understand? We have to start at the basics. The basics is you give people a livable wage, and then it leads to wealth creation. So that the, these are the basics. That that comes then comes the the education, and this is why we have the TFED program, where we're trying to encourage people who are not what they call I hate to use it academically inclined. It's the word that I hate using, academically inclined. I don't like it, but sometimes you have to use it, and we can train them. 
so they can get, particularly young people. I'm talking about young people. Be very excited about the youth economy. I don't know if you have been following it. It's been doing extremely well. It's been doing extremely well. We got a review by the 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 uh, um, the CDB, and hopefully we should get some funding and from the from the CDB. Hopefully, I'm uh, waiting for that. And then, but we're very excited about the youth economy. So it shows how, again, wealth creation. Young people who, who become entrepreneurs, who will expand and who will employ more people. So all in all, the future looks. Because of these tweets, you know, we speak about crime, crime, crime. We're very concerned about crime. But the basic, one of the basic problems is when you arrest people, you must get somewhere to put them. The last government destroyed the custody suites. And no one has accounted for it. Why would you destroy a holding cell, a holding place for people who are who are arrested. We are we started working it and hopefully we should get the custody suites in the next nine months. We should help should have the, the the police as far as being able to detain people when they're arrested. Because right now, if you're somebody in Castries and you're able to be able to marry go, ancillary, denry, as far as suffer to hold him. Or just release him. You understand? And these are the short sighted things that happened. And we paid for it. These are the short things. You destroy a building with absolutely no care in the world, not knowing where you house the people. That's a problem. But we're happy in that. And I'm talking about police who work on the on the Viewfort headquarters starting as we speak. And notice if the Crozier police station has been demolished. Work is going to start. I've been told that the architectural joints are ready. We should go to planning next month. So we should start to work there very soon. So we get the infrastructure for the police together. And the House of Justice, we want to, I hope I, I can do that. We want to sign our ascension to the CCJ when we break the sword, when we turn the sword for the House of Justice. When is the House of Justice going to be built? Yeah. Where, where the House of Justice is going to be located by the old, the, the old courthouse building. You're going to go across the street using the Ministry of Education building. That's the old one? No. Right in town. In town, across from so, the extra so system. Show? Yes. So it's not going to be, so the location that they have before is not going to be used for? But we discussed that many times before. The, 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 the police objected, and as usual, we have government that listens, we uh, So what you say, the new court of justice will be built by the former um, court of justice? Courthouse, and going across the street. And in terms of that, so this is coming out of the time, we just recently, well, over the weekend again, I'm on side two, I'm on side yes, two. Yes, I'm on side two, yes. Yeah, exactly. It's well, very, 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 I'm very, 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 very concerned. I'm told that the homicide that happened by um, the, the mall, I am told that the people are known to the police. That's it. Um, don't say it for me. That's what I'm told. <laughs> you see, I'm told. You know, I don't call it part of um, Wavet du Vampoul. <coughs> but that's what I was told. I was told that the people who were involved were known to the police. That doesn't mean it's good. That's what I was told. The police briefed you on that? Um, I was briefed by the police. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've taken an eye on the dead sealing talks that's happening in the, the US. The oh, the, yeah, oh, the yeah. dead yeah. sealing. Uh, yeah. But of course, you know, the possible implications if they do default um, for not just for the US, but for us as well. I um, want to get your thoughts. But you see, that, that, that's what happens when you have. Um, I don't want to get involved in US politics. Mm -hmm. But it happens when you have opposition people who take extreme positions. You understand? We need to have a middle road. All right? Example. <clears throat> in St. Lucia, we had a successful jazz festival. Very successful. But the middle road would mean that everyone should say, it's good, and let's follow. Let's see how you can improve it next year. But in St. Lucia, what's happened now is the opposition has condemned it. Useless, waste of money. Sorry. You know, I saw you at Jazz and I also saw certain opposition people who were surprisingly there enjoying it. Did you notice a couple of No, I didn't. You didn't notice didn't. There were a couple of people. I didn't. Yes. Ironically. Yes. Yeah. So I think what the, the, the GOP in, in in the US is doing, they've taken an extreme position. And as I was reading this morning on CNN, that, that could probably lead to a massive recession in the entire world. That happens when you take extreme positions. I'm hoping that good sense can prevail, and we and if the U.S. defaults, 
But you know, the, in the U.S. Forces, the U.S. never suffers, you know. <laughs> the U.S. do things for them to survive. We are the, in, in these islands. We are the ones who are going to suffer. But we hope it doesn't happen. But what are the possibilities for us? Well, most of our debt, our, 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 our currency is pegged to the, to the U.S. dollar. Now, if it leads to a devaluation of the U.S. dollar, we will we may suffer. It's too early. It's too early for the, because it's too early. It takes some time. The, the, the effect, the knockdown effect takes some time. So we have to monitor the situation. Yeah, just repeat, I just want to mention the, um, the main rally. I noticed that we are the certain upliftment in the main celebrations. Would the moving forward, would it get up for a wider It's going to be bigger workers. next year. It's yeah, going to be bigger next year. We have construction workers. We have fish up, you know, that don't get that. Next year, the unions are going to be given a stipend mm -hmm. to have a massive media celebration. Okay. It's going to take over island wide? To... Island wide, yeah. But the unions, we're going to lead the charge. Yeah. Prime Minister, um, in the absence of the health minister, um, June 1st, phase one of the universal health care is set to roll, uh, roll out um, you know, maternal and child services with the no cost and money to the media expand. Big, very big, very excited about it. You see, if, if you know, you know that St. Lucia, our birth rate, is beginning to decline. In fact, it, it's been steady, I think, beginning to decline. And that has repercussions for the population, repercussions for our NIC, repercussions, uh, repercussions for, 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 for the future of our country. So what are we trying to do? And I want to congratulate the Ministry of Health. We're starting the universal health care program at the child level, at the maternal care, so we can have mothers being able to get all the necessary tests, all the necessary examinations so that they can have healthy babies and we can start from there. It's just a start of a process to for, 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 for our UHC program. Starting at that level and going forward. Well, where all these tests, you know, you must have, it's said that children's, the, the, best, the best time in their life or the time when all their this, all this situations are rectified or made worse is between conception and it's five or six years old that's what they, that's what they said so we're trying to make sure that we keep this we make sure that they get all the tests because so what you want to do is you want to try to avoid illnesses avoid them particularly the ncds the non-communicable diseases you want to avoid them so if, if the mothers get their pressure checked the mothers get their, their diabetes checked the mothers get all these kind of checks um, hopefully they'll have a healthier baby and a healthier generation. What was the thinking when you when your cabinet you decided to make health care for the eighties and above free? Because we we living in a very we don't we won't live in a society of ageism where people believe as soon as you get fifty years you should you should go and die. That's not that's not, that's, that's not supposed to happen. It's a serious thing. It's very serious. It's very, very serious. Eh? Our retirement age is 55. In the public service? In the public service. If you not pay us, uh, if you not, if you're not a contributor to NIC, right? 55 years old. Now, we found that the population that I said before is getting older. Now, you may think that 80 years old, 80 years old. President Biden is going to be 84 after the election. 80, 80 what? 84, 86. Yeah. President Trump is going to be 82. Nancy Pelosi is right now 80, 81. Um, the, 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 the guy who leads the, 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 in, in the Senate is 80. These guys are up and going now. So it's 80, it's over 80 is old, man. There are a number of people in Lucia who are more than 80, who are alive and who need to be taken care of. Right? Most of them, they need the basic things. Eyes, hearing, private pressure, etc. And this is what that is what the program will take care of. Very necessary. So you take care of all categories? Of all categories. Once you register, you're over 80, you get it. And that's once you access the healthcare community health centers. Once you have centers, you get all these things free. What about the OKEU same thing? All government centers. 80 year olds free. Effective when? First of July. Since we are still <laughs> Since um, what? Since Rihanna stole my question. Oh, he did? Um, I, yeah, I'll be going in a different direction. I'll be a bit upset by the question. 
Um, but you know, we've been seeing this development with the leader of the opposition and his issues in the house with the, with the speaker. I, I mean, we've refrained from asking you about it, but any thoughts? And I'm, I, was, I was happy you did. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy I have I'm the opportunity to ask you now. So um, just your, your thoughts. You see, I'll tell you something. In politics, there's something called semantics and diversion. Okay? I think what's happening in the parliament, the leader of the opposition is just trying to divert from the issues. It's just diversion. The leader of the opposition is looking for relevance. He's looking to find something to make him relevant. You know? I mean, how can the leader of the opposition be annoyed with the people for only putting two of them in the parliament? How? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. He cries, wolf, there's only two of us here, two of us here. The people of the country put two of you in the parliament. That's the system you're under. How are you going to be, in, how are you going to be annoyed with the people for doing that? So I'm not in for, um, you see, we have a lot of things to see about in this country. We want to implement our budget. We have, we have an 18% growth, right? We, we, we may not have the same growth this year, but hopefully... We should have, I want to have, I want to sustain that, that growth. I have things to do. I'm not going to be diverted. The, the, what the leader of the he wants notice. He wants to, 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 to divert us from the issues. And we're not, we're going to remain focused. We have work to do, a lot of work to do. You, you understand? We want to continue St. Jude. By the end of this week, we'll have some good news for you on St. Jude. Very hopeful, I'm very hopeful about it. Next month, when, when I come, I'll be laughing. Because the news we may have on, on, on St. Jude, right? We're working on here on, 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 on HIA, right? I, I'm, I'm going to be making a statement on HIA very soon. So I don't have time to get diverted. What's happening there? Just excitement, just to be relevant. Letter, sort of people to get rid of the speaker. I mean, it's like, I can't get involved. I'm not getting involved in that. Like Anybody wants to drag me in that way, I'm not going. Let's talk about the future of the country. I will talk to the leader any time about the 18% growth. I'll talk to him about how can we sustain it. I'll talk to him relevant about the crime situation. I will speak to him about it. I will speak to him about how we can complete St. Jude. I'll speak to him if he can account on the Pajero letter. I'll speak to him all these things. But I'm not getting involved in semantics and things. And the speaker... Run this parliament. You heard what happened in Antigua. I mean, this week, you heard what happened in England. So why am I getting involved in that? I have no time for that. The country is on, on, on a trajectory that I want to keep it going. And I want all men of goodwill, including the opposition, let's get involved. Elections are over. The opposition will, the opposition will defeat them. I wasn't the one who defeated them. The, the people defeated them. It's the people, not me. Our system says that the people elect you every five years. The people elected two of them. They, they have all the rights and privileges of the opposition. We give them their papers on time. We give them a share in our CDP. We give them a share every we, give, we, we treat them with respect. They do not treat us, they do not treat us with respect. We treat them with respect. We have not gone on any witch hunt. We are doing things properly. So I'm not getting involved in any side too. So any side show is okay. I'm focused. What about, um, I know, I guess maybe Minister King will be more privy to that, but what about the Minister Kingdom Council? Because I know that they have been working on that. What are you going to give bad news for? <laughs> no, because, again, all right, okay. The John Compton Institute project was supposed to be complete. It's not. I guess these are the things that these are the things the opposition should account for. Should tell us why it's not complete. Tell us why you spent all that money. Why? This is what these are the conversations I want to have with the opposition. Not conversations about behaving child child in the House of Assembly. These are these are the questions. And you asked a good question. Very soon, we've commissioned a report. The report is going to be public in a, in a very short, short time. And by the way, give you some news. The special prosecutor, this application is before the Legal and Services Commission. Okay, so that report from there, what happens after 
As soon as you get it, they, the EG will decide what happens to it. The, the sales in project? The EG will decide what happens to the report. When it's, but so we've commissioned the report. I, I understand the report is, is complete. You see, I'll tell you something. I, I hope you note how, how we did things. We didn't just go ahead and accuse people and, and make wild statements and speculate. We were systematic. All the issues, reports have been commissioned. St. Jude Hospital, the report was done by, by a committee of persons. And right now, we have another one. The first one said that we should continue on the original site. The second one now is going to deal with the financial implications of what happened at St. Jude. So we're not running around and making noise and accusing people. We're doing it systematically. And I'm going to tell you, my job is to get the truth and to treat everybody fairly. It's not weakness. Not going across, not going about and accusing people and shouting loud and making, making, making all kinds of threats. It's not weakness. It is being systematic. It's being fair. And is wanting the best outcome for the people of St. Lucia. This is my concern, not me. I have no divine right to be Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I, I, I don't think that I'm entitled to anything. The people made me Prime Minister, and they removed me when they want to. So we've done these things in a systematic way. I want you to follow how we're doing it, and you will see the results. Systematic, not witch hunting or shouting or screaming. Okay, so that report was done to investigate what, what happened. No, to look into. There is no investigator so looking into here. Police, police, police investigate. Okay, so um, who are the people, the group who actually did the looking? Which one you talk? Which one? The, the sale thing. The it was done by a group of forensic accountants. Okay. Money man. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. The cost, all of that. Right? You, you get that very soon. Okay. Not yet, yeah. Just finally, just moving from the judge into Calypso. Calypso chairman employed the government for 250,000, so eventually. Oh, did it go like that? Yes, but that still means they're singing against us. I think they might be looking for anymore. But now that Master has, you know, as a civilian, I could say transition, pick up again in the entertainment field, would the carnival, you know, spread out to Master this time? No, I don't want to get involved in that. I will allow the people who make the, who, the people who think the best will do that. You see, I only wanted one thing to happen, and I'm glad that they agreed. I wanted the opening of the jazz festival to be in Castries East. That statement had to be done. We had to make a statement. It's more than a, it's a philosophical statement. You see, what's happened in St. Lucia, we have begun to lose a philosophical and an ideological position on things and life, you understand? We had to that philosophical position. And this is where the government is. The government is built on a philosophy of seeing about people. This is why we have the community tourism program. This is why we have the youth economy. This is why we have the small and medium-sized enterprise loan. It is to be built on the backs of the people of the country must benefit. Starting the Jazz Festival in Cassius East was a philosophical statement in that the people should benefit from one of the biggest mass events in the country. That's all. Philosophical. And the whole world saw that people could come to Cassius East and have a nice time and go back home safely. That's, that's philosophical. Remember the last, the last person who spoke about Cassius East said that they should go and demonstrate in Marsha. That is what they saw Marsha good for. These are the people who want to run this country. They said that Marsha is good for demonstration. You remember when the Jazz Festival was taken away from Cassius East? When the question was asked why? At the same time, there was a demonstration happening. And somebody said, I'll leave you to do that research. Why don't they go to demonstrate in Marsha? That's what Marsha was good for, demonstration. Further, the Marsha main road was down to be repaired about two years ago. They refused to do it. 
that road was repaired long before the jazz festival. But you know, as, but the question is, oh, you repaired the road because there's jazz in Marsha. Always trying to beat little the people of the country. So starting the jazz, I make no apologies for that. We had to make a philosophical statement. And that's what I stand by. The rest. The special prosecutor, we've got an application in. The, the, and the, the person, the choice is going to be made by the legal and judicial commission. That's what you're waiting for. It's not chosen by me. It's chosen by, 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 by the JLDC. Um, were they both local and regional applicants? Or yeah, they were. They were both okay. local and regional applicants. Okay. Oh, by the way, before you go, I think that your tenure as chairman of the CDB Board of Governors might that ends. In fact, we have a big meeting of the CDB in June, and my tenure will come to an end. So I hope you can, can end with, with, with a bang. Okay, thank you.